The most used Old Testament verse by the New Testament writers is Daniel 7 verse 13, where the prophet has a vision of one like a son of man who comes on the clouds of heaven and is presented to the Ancient of Days, that is God, the Father. There are around 40 New Testament verses that either directly quote or allude to this verse, and the one that follows it is also another New Testament favorite, Daniel 7, 14. The reason is probably because the title of Son of Man was Jesus' favorite self-designation, appearing some 80 times throughout the Gospels alone. We will see how these verses fit almost like a puzzle throughout the New Testament revelation of who the Son of God, that is, that Son of Man figure, the Messiah, really is. For example, in John 5, 27, Jesus explains how God gave him, that is, the Son of Man, authority. This verse echoes Daniel 7, 14, where all authority was given to him, that is, the Son of Man. And then in the second part of John 5, 27, Jesus goes on to explain why. Because he is Son of Man, that is, a human person. And Daniel 7, 13 has already identified the subject as that same exalted, glorified human person called Son of Man. The title simply means a human person and comes from ancient Jewish apocalyptic writings like the book of Daniel and extra biblical books like the books of Enoch. For example, in the first book of Enoch, the figure appears as part of a vision given by an angel, which parallels the vision of Daniel where this Son of Man figure is presented to the Ancient of Days that is God, the Father. According to the Bible and other Jewish sources, this title of Son of Man never refers to an angel, let alone God himself. In Numbers 23 verse 19, we read that God is not a man, nor a son of man. In the extra-biblical book known as Judith, chapter 8, verse 16, in the Greek translation of this work, we again read how God is not a man, neither is he as the Son of Man. And in another extra-Jewish work called the book of Sirach, again in the Greek translation of this work, in chapter 17, verse 30, we read that all things cannot be in man because the Son of Man is not immortal. And we obviously know that God is immortal. Nonetheless, according to these same Jewish apocalyptic writings, God granted the heavenly glorified Son of Man figure unprecedented authority and power because he is the uniquely chosen agent of God. We read in the first book of Enoch, chapter 46, and there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool, that is God. And with him there was another whose face had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of grace like one of the holy angels. I asked the angel who accompanied me about that son of man, who he was, whence he came. The angel answered, This is not an ordinary man, but the man who has righteousness, the Lord of spirits, that is God has chosen him. In the Erdman's commentary on the Bible, as the human being described in Daniel 7, the human being to whom divine authority is granted, Jesus has authority to forgive sins. Jesus has not claimed to be God. If he had, the scribes would have reacted much more violently. He has claimed to be God's vice-regent on earth. While the Son of Man figure is similar to the Ancient of Days in John's vision, of the resurrected Jesus, that is in the book of Revelation, there is no equivalency or identification. In fact, the giving of authority, power, glory to the Son of Man implies that his status is subject and therefore different from that of the Ancient of Days. So to summarize, the title Son of Man harks back to ancient Jewish apocalyptic writings like the book of Daniel, and the extra-biblical works like Enoch. The Son of Man is an exalted, heavenly, glorified human person. And Jesus applies the title to himself around 80 times to point to his own authority and status 
as that son of man figure, the uniquely anointed human son of God. And this title of son of man is never used for angelic figures, let alone for God himself.